Hi everyone, in this video we will be making Fortnite's build system in Unity Engine. So in the actual game, these game mechanics are used by the player to defend himself from the upcoming attack. Without any further ado, let's get started. Let's start by installing a third person controller to our project. You can find this asset in asset store. So the name of the prefab was shadow. I'll just show you quickly how this looks. Soon I'll also be covering a third person controller from scratch but for now let's just use this. First thing I'll do is I'll align the camera a bit to the right and you can set the cam offset in your third person orbit camera script and you can add 0.3 or 0.5 in the x axis to align it towards the right. Now I'll add a canvas to our scene that will hold an image of a pointer to show the player the direction of the bullets. But we won't be focusing on the combat system right now. So let's add a new script for our build system. I'll name it build system. And I'm adding this component in our main camera. You can find this camera in your prefab of your third person controller itself. So let's open this script in Visual Studios. I'll make a serialized field, transform and I'll name it cam child. This transform will basically be holding a empty game object that would be the children object of our cam or camera we'll be using this child object for our raycast so in update let's do if physics.raycast the first parameter will be the start position of our ray which will be the cam child dot position so the ray will start from the empty object's position and it will be moving towards the forward direction so the second parameter will be cam child dot forward now let's make a raycast hit. What raycast hit basically tells us is what object our ray hit or has hit. So the third parameter will be this raycast hit and it's done using the keyword out. So we'll do out hit and hit is basically the name of our raycast hit. And the fourth and final parameter will be the raycast distance. So I'll make its value 6 for now but we'll be changing it after doing some tests. Let's see how 6 works out. Now I'll make another serialized field and I'll name it floor build. So basically it would be the floor object that we, we are going to build. There would be two other objects that would be stairs and walls. But for now let's just test it with the floor. So in our update I'll do if the recast hits something then floor build's position will be equals to new vector 3 and we want to round off these values as these values would be a float value so what I'm gonna do is I'll use mathf.round to integer so we'll be rounding off it to an integer and for the first parameter of our uh, vector 3 which would be the x axis I'll do hit dot point dot x inside the brackets and for the y and z axis we'll do the same thing but for the y axis it would be hit dot point dot y and for the z axis it will be hit dot point dot z. Now let's go back to unity and see how this looks. So first thing we would wanna do we'll give the reference for our child object and our floor object. So inside our main camera I added an empty object. I'll name it cam child. Now what we wanna do is we'll select this empty object and we'll rotate it in our x axis so if you see the rotation of the empty object would be same as the main camera but we don't want that we want it to point downwards so i'll i'll tell you why we are doing this so for the explanation so if we'll be making a ray in the forward axis of our camera we won't be hitting our terrain unless we'll be looking downwards so if we make a ray from the empty object we'll be easily able to instantiate our buildings now we can simply give reference to our cam child object by dragging it in an inspector and for our floor build object i'll simply be making a cube at least for now but later on we'll going to change this cube i'll move it a bit behind the player to see if the position is getting changed and now in our main camera we can give the reference to this cube as our floor build object now let's see and the cube is moving with us i'll have to reduce the cam child's rotation a bit so this cube moves ahead of us instead of below us one more thing you would want to do is change the cube's layer 
to ignore rekhas so it doesn't block the rekhas so one thing you all will notice now is that it seems like the cube is snapping in a grid and that's exactly what we want all right now i gave it a transparent material and i removed the box collider from the cube as we'll be using this cube just to show where we are instantiating our floor or our other objects now i will scale it down in our y axis to make it look like a floor and inside our script uh, in our y axis we can add the local scale of our floor build we'll be adding local scale dot y so the floor stays above the ground this is how it should look by now I'll scale up the floor build object in x and z axis. I'll make it scale three, and we'll have to make changes in our script as well to make the snapping work. Now, for this, I'll use a conditional operator, in which first we'll check if mathf dot round to integer hit dot point dot x is bigger than zero question mark. Then, if it is true, if it is bigger than zero, then we'll be dividing the hit dot point dot x by 3 and the round off of it will be multiplied by 3 the reason why we are using 3 is because that's the scale that i set for our x and z axis actually instead of bigger than 0 make it not equals to 0 now the thing i'll write after the colon will be the value if it is equals to 0 basically what we are doing here is getting the multiples of 3 Okay, so this part can get a little tricky. That's why I'm going to explain it again. So over here, we are checking if the hit dot point dot x, the round off of hit dot point dot x is not equals to zero, then we'll be doing this thing, all right, which will be dividing by three and multiplying by three to get the multiples. And if it is, if it isn't true, this will be kind of like an else statement so if it is true then else this I did the same thing for the z-axis over here and same for the y-axis but for our y-axis instead of 3 I'll do 0 in the else and now everything should work fine let's test it out you should see that everything is snapping properly even with a different scale and as the as this floor is going to be a platform for our player that's why i had to scale it up so yeah let's let's go further with the video all right now let's instantiate these flow prefabs so we can actually tell if the flows are snapping correctly or not so I'll make another serialized field. Uh, it will be a transform field and I'll name it floor prefab. We will be making this prefab in a minute. But first inside our recast, let's do if input dot get mouse button down zero. So if we click the first mouse button, then we'll be instantiating our floor prefab at floor build dot position. And for the rotation, it will be quotidian dot identity, which means that the rotation will be same as the prefab's rotation. For the floor prefab object, I'll duplicate our floor build object and I'll name it floor prefab. I'll make a different material for our prefab so it isn't transparent and we'll also add a box collider to it so player can actually stand on this platform. Now you can simply drag it to your assets folder to make it a prefab and delete it from your hierarchy and in your main camera script give the reference to the prefab and now you should see we are able to instantiate our platform and everything should be snapping properly we are instantiating using mouse click that's it for this part of the video i am divij and we'll be covering a lot more in future parts so stay tuned and subscribe to the channel to get notified you can press the bell icon like the videos share it with a friend comment down below tell me what else you would want to see in this series also you can download all the project files from my patreon if anybody is interested i'll leave a link in description and that's it
थैंक यू